what are the strategies for cleansing your vagina, keeping your vagina in overall good health, and looking after your vaginal health during and after sex? And how do things like the type of clothes you wear and even your pubic hair, how do those things affect your vaginal health? You want to know about all of these things and more? Keep watching because in this video, I will address all of these different topics. Hi ladies, I'm Dr. Katie. I'm a board certified family doctor. Welcome to Hey Doc. On this channel, we talk all things health, but in particular, we have a special passion for women's health and fertility medicine. So if you're new on this channel, welcome. Make sure you smash the like button and that you subscribe. So as mentioned previously in this video, we will talk about vaginal self-care. Before we get into the core of today's matter, let's make sure we're all on the same page and that we all know what's what when it comes to the area down below. Many of us get confused when we hear the term vulva and vagina. That's often because we think that both terms are the same. They're actually not ladies. Up until now, you would be excused for using both terms interchangeably. But let me clarify those terms for you so that you are no longer confused when it comes to both terms. This area is the vulval area. It encompasses the pubic mound, the labia majora, the labia minora, the clitoris, the urethral opening, the opening to the vagina, and the perineum. And this area alone is the vagina. So you can see when you say my vagina, very often ladies actually mean this area and not the actual vagina, which is this area. So for more precision, ladies, especially when it comes to describing what's happening in your female private area with your doctor, this will help you to use the right term so that the doctor knows exactly what area you are talking about. I want to talk about the vagina in a little bit more detail. The vagina is actually a collapsed tube, which actually forms the connection between the external aspect of the woman's genital area, which we now know is called the vulval area, and the cervix, which is the entrance into the woman's uterus. And ladies, there's no price for guessing the important function that the vagina plays in conception. It is, of course, the area where the semen is deposited during sexual intercourse. And nine months later, all being well forms the birthing canal, where a beautiful baby is given birth to. Right, now that we've got our heads around the specific parts of the anatomy and we know what the vulval area is and we know more specifically what area is actually the vagina, let's talk around how to keep our vulval vaginal area clean and healthy. First, we will talk about how to keep our vulval vaginal area clean. And I think calling this part, keeping it simple, is appropriate because cleaning our vulval vaginal area is indeed simple. It doesn't have to be complicated. Ladies, wash daily. At the very minimum, at the very least, wash once a day using water and those skilled fingers of yours. Those of you ladies out there who are saying, Dr. Katie, are you saying we should just be using water? No soap? Are you being serious? Listen, this is a whole debate in and of itself, okay? To use just water and your fingers or to use soap and a cloth. That's out of the scope of this video, but I will definitely make a separate video to explain the pros of just using water and your fingers and the pros and the cons of using different types of soap and different types of cloth. But suffice to say that for the purpose of this video, if you've just been using water and your fingers and it's worked for you, continue to do so. And if you have found a soap and a cloth that has worked for you, continue to do so. Until I address the difference between the two techniques in the separate video, just because I don't want to make this video too long. And in that video, there will be a lot more detail and then you can choose what works best for you. But for this video, just wash daily, however way it's worked for you so far. 
Now, the next advice as it relates to washing your vulval vaginal area is do not wash inside the vagina. Now, remember, this area is the vagina. Inside of this area, this collapsed tube is the vagina. Do not insert anything in there that will inject water or soapy water in your vagina. It is not necessary. Yes, ladies, you heard me correctly. It is not necessary. Even with water? Yes, not even with water. There is a very delicate, slightly acidic pH in the vagina. Inserting anything like water, soap, or even putting a sponge inside of your vagina for the sake of cleaning your vagina affects that delicate pH balance. What that leads to is irritation and vaginal infections. So if we are not supposed to clean our vagina, which is inside of this collapsed tube, how does it get clean? And how do we prevent the odors? Your vagina cleans itself, ladies. Mm -hmm. The discharge that you see coming out of your vagina that changes in its characteristics along the different stages of your menstrual cycle, yes, that discharge itself, it cleanses your vagina. It removes the dead cells and certain harmful vaginal bacteria. For the sake of keeping your vulval vaginal area clean, do not use the following items, special scrubs, scented soaps, and douching. Yes, even though they are advertised and designed for vaginal care, they do not care for your vagina at all. They actually affect this very delicate pH balance in the vagina, and this will bring about vaginal infections. Ladies, being a woman myself, I understand why we choose to use these products in our vulval vaginal area. Yes, to keep the area clean, but most importantly, who wants a smelly vagina? So I get it. Trust me, I do. But let's get something straight, ladies. Your vagina is not supposed to have a strawberry smell and even less a beautiful flowery vanilla scent. No, in fact, I think if your vagina smelled like that, I'd be worried. <laughs> but your vagina is supposed to have a very subtle and mild odor to it. Let me put it this way, as a rule of thumb, for you to know whether or not your vagina is not smelling right or is not smelling healthy, you shouldn't be able to perceive a strong smell coming from your vagina through your clothes. That means you're just sat down and you can smell a very fishy, strong, acidic type of odor through your clothes. And there is definitely something wrong if the other person sitting next to you can also perceive that odor. So as long as that's not happening, you're not perceiving the smell yourself or someone else can't smell it. And it's only when you you know, you go to the toilet or you're about to do your vaginal self-care that you smell this mild smell, it's fine. Trust me, it's okay. We all get that kind of mild, subtle smell. By the way, if you get that type of strong vaginal smell, you know what time it is. It's time to see your doctor. Another important tip for female personal hygiene is to clean the area between our gluteal cheek. Very often this area tends to be overlooked, especially by our younger ladies. So when you're in the shower, as well as keeping the front end clean, so remember the back end also. So make sure that you are using the same technique to clean the area in between your buttock cheeks. Remember that they are sweat glands in this area. Some of us sweat excessively in this area, which will contribute to some odors that we can sometimes perceive coming from our vulval vaginal area. Another reason why you would need to clean in between your buttock cheeks is because besides the sweat that happens in this area, which contribute to the odors, we also have stool. Let me explain. After you've opened your bowels, although you've used toilet tissue to wipe yourself down there, sometimes, despite wiping yourself, you will get a small amount of stool residue around the anal area. And unless you clean this area, the stool residue will remain in that area and also will cause odors. Another very simple thing that we can all do to keep our vulval area 
clean and healthy is to wipe ourselves after we pass urine. We all already do it, right? But although we do it, we must ensure that we do it properly. We must always wipe from front to back. Wiping this way will prevent the transfer of bacteria from the anal area to the urethral area, which will lead to a urinary tract infection. The reason why every single woman, including girls, should wipe after passing urine is to prevent the strong acidic odor, which tends to occur when urine residue is left lurking around the vulval area. Moving on from keeping it simple, let's talk about vulval health and sex. Some women experience dryness and thinning of the vulval vaginal area. This tends to happen in older women and women going through the menopause. The dryness of the vulval vaginal area though can also happen in younger women. So these women with a dry vagina and or a thinning vulval vaginal area will experience pain during sex due to the friction that comes from the penis. And for these women, the use of a lubricant during sex is absolutely appropriate. If you're going to use a lubricant, do yourself a favor and check the ingredients first. Make sure that you're staying away from all lubricants that contain the following ingredients because they disturb the natural pH balance that is found in the vagina. And that will make you more susceptible to vaginal yeast and bacterial infections. So you don't want your lubricant containing any of these ingredients. By the way, did you know that it was also a good idea to check the component of the condoms too? Several of the brands of condoms on the market contain spermicides, and these spermicides affect the good pH balance that is found in the vagina. And the condoms do this by killing off the good bacteria that is found in the vagina, which are needed to keep this slightly acidic pH balance. Now, after sex. Yes, your vulvar vaginal area still needs some TLC. Sex can sometimes cause bacteria to enter the urethra, which is the tube that connects your bladder to the outside. And the urethra is the passageway to evacuate urine from your bladder to the outside. Some women will say, I always find that after sex, I develop a urinary tract infection. I don't get it, I do the right thing, down below is clean, I only have one sexual partner, but yet, after sex, I always get a urinary tract infection. One of the very simple things that you can do to prevent that from happening is very shortly after intercourse, you need to get up and you need to go and pass urine. What that will do is that it will flush out the bacteria, preventing it from tracking up your urethra and going into your bladder, which will lead to the urinary tract infection. Also, if you fall in the category of women who always develops a urinary tract infection after sex, it wouldn't be such a bad idea for you to clean your vulval area with warm water after sex. And that will ensure that any bacteria that ends up in the vulval area after sex is flushed out without affecting the pH of the vagina. Again, another useful advice for women who experience urinary tract infections after having sex, together with some of the measures I've mentioned earlier, what I do for my patients who have this problem is I give them some antibiotics that they can keep with them. After passing urine shortly after sexual intercourse, I encourage them to take one antibiotic immediately so that it will kill off any bacteria that remains along the urethra. And this has been really helpful in many of my patients. I tend to use the antibiotic known as nitrofurantoin or cephalexin, but please seek the advice of your own doctor. Dress for vulval success. What do you mean, Dr. Katie? There's certain clothes that we choose to wear that makes us beautiful, sophisticated, and very elegant, but they are no good for the health of our vulval vaginal area. These clothes are tight, they cause us to sweat excessively in our groin area, in between our gluteal cheeks, and in the vulval area. Moisture in an area like the vagina that is not exposed to air so that it can dry leads not only to vaginal odors, but the vaginal's pet bear, vaginal thrush. Therefore, dressing for vulval success simply means wearing underwear that is made out of cotton fabric rather than silk or polyester, 
cotton fabric is your vulval area's best friend when it comes to your vulval health because it doesn't hold moisture and therefore you are less likely to get vaginal odors when your underwear is made out of cotton. When it comes to underwear, ladies, I would argue that thongs are not your vulval vaginal area's best friend. Simply by the nature of their design, thongs are more likely to have fecal residues on them because they just sit in between your buttock cheeks. And if you've opened your bowels and you've got some fecal residue sitting around your anal area, this fecal residue is likely to get onto the underwear and it's very easily transferred into your vaginal area or even your urethra, leading to infections like urinary tract infections and affecting the pH balance in your vagina. So if you are a lady who is always having an issue with your vulval vaginal area, whether it's a bacterial infection, not caused by an STD of course, but um, you're always getting thrush or a urinary tract infection happening over and over again, and you just can't work out what's happening, but you know that you are a lady who loves your thongs, reconsider and see whether wearing a different underwear does Design stops you from having all of these different vulval issues. We're still talking about underwear. The next thing that you must do is change your underwear daily and only wear clean underwear. You think that's obvious? Well, not to everyone. Some people think that changing your underwear daily means that as long as it's a different underwear, you can wear the underwear that you wore yesterday, but that is not washed. I don't understand how, but that's the purpose of these videos. We're not here to shame anyone. We're just here to clarify so that everyone is on the same page and is able to be empowered with information to be able to look after your woman's health. On the days when you feel that your underwear is a little bit more damp than usual, you may need to change your underwear more than once a day. So for example, on the days when you are on in your fertile window, you might get a lot more cervical mucus in your underwear, or if you've had some urinary accidents and you have some urine residue around your vulval area, you will need to change your underwear more than once because the damp underwear will give off an odor and will affect your vaginal pH. So changing your underwear or wearing a panty liner that you can change regularly will ensure you maintain good vulval health on those days when you are a little bit more damp than other days. Finally, in dressing for success, try to avoid wearing tight clothing. It's fine if you desire to look elegant or you're going for a particular look, Every so often, that's fine, but wearing tight clothing all of the time is not going to be good for your vulval health. To shave or not to shave? That's the million dollar question for this video. Look, there's no right or wrong answer here. The purpose of the pubic hair is to protect our vulval area from bacteria, from small particles that can sometimes be found in that area, as well as certain viruses. Believe it or not, the skin that the pubic hair covers is rather sensitive and fragile. So pubic hairs protect the skin from the friction from our clothes and protects the skin from the friction of the pubic hair of our partner during sexual intercourse. However, in order for your pubic hair to function in its full capacity, you must make sure that you nurture it. What do I mean by that? If you're going to keep your pubic hair, you must make sure that you wash it, trim it every so often, make sure that it's free from foreign particles. And I would argue if you're going to nurture your pubic hair in that manner, you can leave it alone. The only time when I think it probably is a good idea to get rid of your pubic hair is if you're not going to nurture it, if you are unable for one reason or the other to keep it clean. And it can trap some bacteria, some viruses that can compromise your vulval health. Under those circumstances, I would say it'd be a good idea to get rid of your pubic hair. But if you are a woman who feels very strongly about getting rid of your pubic hair, all well and good. Ultimately, with or without pubic hair, if you're someone who has good hygiene, it's not going to compromise your vulval health. Just a word of caution for you ladies who decide you want to get rid of your pubic hair. Like I said, all well and good. 
But if you're going to use a razor blade to do that, you just have to bear in mind that the friction of the razor blade against the hair follicles will lead to inflammation and irritation, which can be very itchy for some women. And if you're unlucky, the inflammation of some of these hair follicles can lead to infections. So I would advocate, if you decide to get rid of your pubic hair, I would advocate considering other methods like waxing or laser hair removal. Final but important tips and tricks for vulvovaginal care. The first is avoiding scented tampons, pads, or liners. It sounds very fancy, but not good for your vulval vaginal health, trust me. During your period, change your pad or tampon regularly. How often should I be changing my pad, Dr. Katie? My answer to that is that there is no prescribed amount of time that you should change your pad or your tampon. A rule of thumb that I tend to advise my patients is that if you are a woman with a normal flow and your periods aren't heavy, I would say it would be reasonable to change your pad two to three times a day. That will prevent the odor that results from having a pad for too long and lots of blood building up on that pad. So two to three times is adequate if you have a normal flow. Obviously, if your flow is much heavier, then you will have to change three, four times whatever is reasonable for you, because what is considered a heavy period flow varies for all women. Wash and wipe regularly when you're on your periods. Also, consuming probiotic yogurts will help prevent yeast infections and reduce vaginal odors by keeping the vaginal pH steady. Do not use yogurt in your vagina, ladies. The yogurt is for your mouth, not your vagina. Just saying, just in case someone wasn't clear. Staying well hydrated helps to keep bacterial overgrowth and stress-related sweat in check. That's it for this informative video. I hope it's been helpful and you have enjoyed it. Before you leave us, remember to subscribe and do like this video. It will help to spread the reliable information that we share here on HeyDoc. And remember, if you found it helpful, share it with someone else. As always, I look forward to seeing you in our next video. But until then, there are plenty of other very useful content on this channel. Do make sure you check those out and we'll see you in our next video.